how did it go getting the pass? So I went to the Harbour Master's office to get a day pass for the River Hamble, which apparently costs £4 for a day. Um, but apparently you don't need one unless you've got an engine. And you don't have an engine. But I didn't have an engine. Uh, over 15 horsepower. Right. So um, for paddle boats, it's fine to go for free. Okay. So now we're going to go down to Hamble and chuck the boat down the public slipway. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I've got these paddles. My dad started a kayak 20 years ago and the guy didn't want the paddles, so. But you only got one there. That's all you need. Is that all you need? They're a bit narrow. Yeah. But, um, for testing, that would be fine. Okay, so t tell us through your launch, talk us through your launch strategy. So we're gonna go and put this in the water. The water. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Okay, so are we ready to launch? Yes. Right. Is that the magic unfolds? I can do the trolley, really. Yeah. Are you going to get in the boat? <laughs> okay, so before everyone points out the obvious, there are a few issues with the hull design. Um, there's actually some further analysis at the end of this video and also the next steps, because I will be making some changes to the boat and then I'll be testing it again. So it's probably worth having a look at that bit of video right at the end of this video before making YouTube comments. Okay, now you can watch the footage again. All right, cheers. <laughs> That's gonna tip. disappears into the distance. Are you stuck? <laughs> Are you stuck? Let's see if this is working or not. Um, I can't really see because I'm now filming through a plastic bag, but uh, we're now in the boat. So it appears to float, it's a bit tippy, but actually not, I don't know really how it compares to rowing boats, it seems to be fairly similar. I could do with some longer paddles. Yes. On the whole, the fabrication technique has worked. And now I want to build a bigger one. <laughs> Excellent, and what's the, uh, what's the experience of being in your home built boat like? It's fairly uh, luxurious. Yeah. Being with boat people. Yeah. Um, with the big yachts. Yeah. And really being, you know, one of the boat crowd. Yeah. So. Do you do you feel you're one of the boat crowd now? Yes. Say I'm one of the boat I'm crowd. <laughs> okay. So here's some further analysis of the boat. Obviously, it was a bit unstable, and that was mainly due to the fact that the uh, hull shape is quite pointy. It's a bit of an exaggeration, and it felt like the water line was roughly here, um, which meant obviously it tipped sideways quite a lot. 
Um, basically that's just due to the hole design. When I was working on it, I concentrated on the fabrication technique of using expanded polystyrene in the fleece and the fiberglass. The boat was quite strong, so I was happy with that part. Um, but obviously I'm not the best boat designer, so it's a bit too pointy. So um, it's gonna be very hard to modify that hole design, obviously without rebuilding the whole boat, which I don't really want to do. So there's several options. Um, the first one, which is probably most commonly used, is to have an outrigger, where you basically have a stick sticking out sideways and another float, and the obviously the buoyancy keeps it above the water um, in one direction, and the weight of it keeps it in the other direction, and that keeps the boat stable. Um, However, I don't really want to have to do that and go on a river with a boat that's designed incorrectly and then I've had to make an outrigger because um, that looks a bit stupid. The other um, thing I could do, lots of people um, have commented, in fact one person by the side of the river as we were carrying the boat back to the car commented that it needed some ballast. So we could put a heavy weight in the bottom of the boat um, which would obviously make it sit lower in the water and that would make it more stable. Um, the issue with that is that the boat's quite heavy um, I probably need a trolley to wheel it round on and also getting it on the roof rack is quite hard. Um, the other option is a water ballast with pumps that bring you know, water into tanks in the bottom of the hull and some sort of pump that pumps water in and pumps it out. Um, that's also quite complicated for such a small boat and also the river water is really dirty so I don't really want to have to wash out the tanks and all the pipes every time I use it. Um, the, the one thing I did notice of course is um, in the footage where I get into the boat it doesn't really tip over too much um, because as this side of, side of the boat hits the water obviously it's quite deep so it doesn't actually fully capsize so it didn't feel too unstable to me and I'm half tempted just to leave it like that what I th in fact I think I'm going to do is make a modification to the hull design so um, here's the exaggerated point of the hull again in fact what I'm going to do is add some bits onto the outside um, like this. So I'm going to stick expanded polystyrene down the hull lengthways. So um, let's just say that's the boat at the moment. And then the keel is there. I'm going to stick some extra pointy bits down each side um, and skin those over in fiberglass. So effectively, we end up with a tri hull, which should be much more stable. And they're going to come a bit wider at the sides. So that's going to be my go for plan. Um, I'm also going to be experimenting with propulsion devices. So the plan is to make a twin propeller electric outboard. Um, so we'll have, you know, propellers that sit down there somewhere um, in the um, triangle of the, the of the tri hull, basically. So um, look out for boat part seven, where I'll be making the, the hull modification, and part eight, where I'll be hopefully building some form of propulsion device, or the other way around. See you next time.